today we're kind of in the classroom, as you can see. Um, we're going to be talking about set lists today. Now, oftentimes when we talk about set lists, it is more of an art than a science. And so I enter into this conversation with a little bit of trepidation, knowing that we all have our own way of doing this and that in the vineyard, the, the worship set is like the holy of holies. So how dare I talk about this, but I'm going to try because when we're training worship leaders, we need to give them some handles and some on ramps to find their way into how on earth they plan a worship set. It can't just be by feel. Um, and so here's a way to start that conversation, or maybe you won't find this useful, but I found it really helpful when I've been training worship leaders just to get the conversation going. One thing I like about this is that we're talking about the journey. And some of you might be familiar with John Wimber's phases of the heart and this model does somewhat represent that. Now my friend Dan Wilt introduced me to this way of looking at a worship set. In this worship set we're talking about the kind of four to five songs, 25 to 30 minutes. And um, we open with a gathering song. You might know it as a call to worship song. Um, some songs that you would think of in this category would be Come Now is the Time, We Have Come by United Pursuit, Here For You would be another great one. But the point of the gathering song is to pull everybody in. And it's really a place of leaning into that value of accessibility and also posturing ourselves as pastors who want to build bridges for people to make their way into worship. People are coming in, they've just had a fight in the car, or they've struggled to find a place to park, or whatever it is. They're new, they're there for the first time. We want to gather people in. And so in all of this, it's not just about the song itself. It's our posture and how the arrangement goes, all of those things. But a gathering or a call to worship song is a great place to start. Songs two and three are a great place to put songs that talk about who God is and what he's done for us. Remember, we want Jesus to be the center of our worship. And particularly at the minute, there are so many songs that are me-centered. So this is a great spot to put in songs that use the we, the corporate sense, and allowing everyone to participate. And that sense of flowing from the gathering into the, the communal worship space. And so songs like Great Are You Lord, Jesus Name, that are really declaring who he is. Now it doesn't mean that we just sing about him. We have that thing in the vineyard. We love singing to him. We can still sing to him, but it's, it's very important that we remember in our worship times that worship is for him. And as we're training worship leaders, it's important that we don't just assume that they understand that revelation comes first of who God is and then we respond to who he is and what he's done for us. So then songs four and five are a great spot for us to intentionally pursue that place of intimate worship, that place of visitation. We can't take it for granted. And although many of us are in a rush to get there, on the other hand, sometimes we get in the zone of, of singing those songs about God and it's maybe easier than really leaning into intimacy and in that place of vulnerability and uh, perhaps even space and openness before the Lord. So these are five songs. You could do it in four. You can drop the gathering song. You could do one revelation and two response. You know, if you're doing a shorter set, if you are doing a longer worship set, perhaps you would loop through this and cycle through it once and then come back to it again. Um, there are different ways of doing this. This is just a way to get the conversation going as we're training worship leaders and helping them to understand the journey where we start with the revelation of who God is and then end up with our response of love songs, of surrender unto Jesus. Some of us find that we're particularly drawn to one phase over the other. If you're a real pastor with a pastor's heart for people, you probably love that place of call to worship and gathering people in. If you're a teacher, you probably love that place where you're declaring the truth of who God is. If you're more of a prophetic worship leader, you maybe find that your sweet spot is this place of response and listening for the Lord and that space to do that. However, 
We need all of those things. We need you to be you. We need you to operate in the way that God created you to. And we need the whole journey. So let's pay attention to that. Let's train and release people to do that. And I bless you to have an amazing time as you journey these worship sets in your communities.